What is up, everyone? Welcome to Wine Talk with Tesh. I am Tesh. Uh, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys are all doing okay, and I hope you guys uh, are surviving life and being locked down, and hopefully we can slowly start moving back to some semblance of normal. As you can see, I feel fresh as hell with my fade and my baby face. Uh, if you guys have your wines, uh, please go ahead and pour the Henri Bourgeois Le Baron Sancerre, and we'll start talking about that in just a minute. But a uh, couple of quick shout outs, of course, as always, shout out to Fluid Concepts and my dude Jordan, who's behind the scenes, uh, taking care of us and making sure that everything looks dope. Uh, and then also shout out to Platinum Wine for hooking us up with the wines uh, and just really giving us a great price on the wines. Uh, they didn't have to do that, uh, but they're, uh, you know, they're good friends of mine and uh, we wanted to show them love, and they were all about showing us love, too. So uh, shout out Platinum Wine Lounge. If you guys haven't been there, it's a great spot to go hang out. Uh, they have a great wine selection. Uh, the guys are incredibly nice. Uh, they're good people. Go show them some love uh, next time you're in the Roseville, Rockland area, which for I know a lot of you guys is kind of like uh, driving too far for some reason. But you know what? I'm not going to judge you. It's not that far. Okay? Just relax. You'll be fine. Um, anyhow, let's jump into some of these wines. So first and foremost, we're going to be in France. Uh, my boy Jordan's going to throw up the map of France in just a second. When you look at that map, you're going to be looking for the green area of the map, which is the Loire Valley. Uh, we're going to be, this particular winery comes from the eastern side of that map. So you're looking more towards the center uh, of the map. Uh, right on the edge of the green, there's going to be a small region called Sancerre. Uh, this particular wine is labeled, um, if you have the bottle, you'll see right on the label. Oh, you can't see it with my new light, my new fancy light. Uh, but we got a bottle image coming up here. Um, you can see right on the bottle, it says Le Baron Sancerre. So it's from the region of Sancerre. Um, more specifically, it's from a vi vineyard known as Le Baron. And that vineyard is located between a small village called Chavignon and Sancerre. So uh, we're right there, right inside of Sancerre you know, they can still label it that way. Um, and it's a beautiful wine. This particular wine uh, is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Um, the winery is incredibly old. Uh, they have been farming grapes. They are now 11 generations deep. They have been around for literally forever. Um, but the winery and the namesake didn't really like come into place until about the 1950s when Henri Bourgeois uh, whose name is on the label, kind of decided that he was going to do more than just the grape growing side of it, right? So he's the one who really kind of elevated it and said, we're going to start making wines from these very specific vineyard sites and just really make high quality wine. Um, eventually, his sons came along in the 60s uh, by the name of Jean-Marie and Remy. And even further down the, ro down the road, uh, their sons, so the son's sons, uh, came along and they're the ones who are currently at the helm of the winery. They go by the name of Arnaud, uh, Lionel, and Jean Christophe. Um, if you guys are familiar with Sancerre, right? Today we're drinking a Blanc, so it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. The only other uh, grape that you'll find from Sancerre is going to be Pinot Noir. If you ever run into a Sancerre Rouge, as it is known, you're going to be drinking Pinot Noir. And incidentally, I haven't had one that has let me down. 
So if you guys ever run into uh, Sansa Rouge, especially by Henri Bourgeois, um, but you know, any, any producer really, check it out, like give it a go. It's a, it's a different take on Pinot uh, that might not be your California Pinot or your Oregon Pinot. Uh, and it's really well done more often than not. So um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the winery. I'm a fan of this particular one, this Sancerre Blanc, this 100% Sauvignon Blanc. It is a wine that I put on the menu and I carried during my duration uh, at the kitchen and I was running that program. Uh, and it's because I think it's really hard to, I don't wanna say it's really hard to find. That's not true. What I was trying to say is um, it's exciting to find exceptional Sauvignon Blanc from Sancerre, right? Uh, a lot of good producers. Uh, another one, there's a producer named Claude Ruffo. If you ever run into that, amazing sensor. Uh, anyhow, back to Henri Bourgeois. These guys do all organic farming. This particular wine uh, spends uh, about five months on the lease, on the dead yeast cells, inside of stainless steel tanks that are thermoregulated. All that means is that they, they modulate the temperature within a certain time, right, or a certain degree. Um, and they hold it at that. So that way there's consistency of what's happening during fermentation. So if you guys have a glass, if you haven't already drank some, you are messing up. You need to be drinking the entire time, all right? So uh, first and foremost, on the nose on this wine, a lot of like ripe uh, tropical fruit, maybe some like yellow orchard fruit. Um, but the most prominent thing for me uh, on this wine is gonna be like a flint-like character. Um, if you don't know what that smells like, it kind of smells like gunpowder. Um, and it's kind of typical for wines from this region due to like the chalky clay soil. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very abundant and it kind of like makes Sancerre what Sancerre is in my opinion. And it, it's what makes it so, spe so special, that flint-like aroma. So. As you keep uh, smelling and enjoying and drinking, um, I'm gonna drink some more. So if you have any questions, as always, type them in along the way. Uh, I'll do my best to throw an answer at you. Um, and Jordan will relay the questions for me. Alicia says, nice fade. Thanks. Uh, th thanks for appreciating my fade. You know, I had to look good for this. Uh, now that salons are open, right? <laughs> don't don't start with that. I've been getting fades the whole time. Uh, on the palate, this wine has a very nice uh, crisp acidity to it. Uh, there's a ton of notes. Like I'm picking up on lime, um, a little bit of green apple. Um, that orchard fruit like definitely comes through like a little bit peri at the end. Um, maybe just a hint of lychee on, on the tropical notes. Um, I love this wine. Let me know what you guys think. Are I do have a uh, comment slash question from James. Uh, did you say flint? If so, what is that? Flint is a type of soil. I did say flint, like in like flint. Uh, flint is a type of soil. Um, and, uh, the, yeah, the best way that I can relay like what it like smells like or the result, the end result of the wine and what Flint soil, uh, really kind of refers to, or is linked to, is kind of like gunpowder. It has like, it's very like distinct, like gunpowdery smell. Um, if you've never smelled gunpowder, um, let's go to a gun shop and I will, <laughs> and I will, uh, I will, I will introduce you to the aroma. So when I was growing up, how, why do I even know what gunpowder smells like? When I was growing up, um, my, my, one of my best friends, Ron Slay, shout out Ron. Uh, I don't know if you watch these, but I hope you do. Uh, my best friend, uh, Ron Slay, his dad, uh, he, he would take a shooting and um, we shot shotguns and we would go back to the house, to his house, and we would re reload uh, all of the shells. And so I, I got familiar with that smell and I got older and I was like, oh, something that I know that actually helps me in the wine world. Um, and it, take, it takes me back a little bit every time, you know I mean, you associate that smell with something from your past. It takes me back to that. That's why I even know what it smells like. So, uh, so yeah, that's what it, that's what it is. Uh, what I would pair this Sancerre with, if I was being bougie, I would pair this with like 
scallops, bass, maybe like a light curry or something with mango in it. Uh, that would, those would all be really, really good, great choices. Um, if I was being a, uh, a husband and a daddy, uh, I would pair it with uh, tuna tater tot casserole, like I did tonight. And it was delicious, might I add. Um, we all have different bars, right? Sometimes your bar has got to be different according to, <laughs> to who you're with. So uh, if, you, if you're, if you're going to like do it up, I would say, man, scallops all day. Scallops or bass, I think this would be a great dish. Um, speaking of pairings, uh, last time we did the test talk, a lot of you guys asked for my lamb recipe. And I went, started going through my recipe book, and I realized that I've never written down my lamb recipe. Um, so I wrote it down so that way you guys have something to work off of, but I haven't yet tried making it based off of my instructions. So here's what's going to happen. I am, I am cooking it tonight. I bought some lamb today. Uh, I will make the lamb curry tonight. Uh, if you want to come over and kick it in my backyard, shoot me a text message. Um, but, here, but on the real side, uh, I'm going to make it according to my instructions. I'm gonna make sure it holds up to what I want it to be and what, what I want you guys to enjoy at home. Uh, and after I test it, um, then I will put it out. If you want it, shoot me a message at my Wine Talk with Tesh uh, uh, Instagram or, or Facebook page, either one, just shoot me a message uh, that you want the lamb curry recipe and I'm happy to share it with you. On that same note, shout out to my big sister, Neelam, uh, who kind of walked me through it because I was like, I've made this before but I, you know, I just kind of winged it and I really want it to be special for everybody. Uh, and she kind of gave me her two cents and y'all got, my, my sister is an amazing cook. So, um, so shout out to her. And once you guys get to experience it in the next week or so, uh, hopefully you enjoyed as much as I have over the years. So uh, finish your glass and then we'll move on to the next one. Oh, James, did that answer your question? All right, let me fill it, finish this glass and we'll. Thank you, sister, appreciate you. All right. Now, I hope you guys like that as much as I do. I think in terms of Sancerre, Henri Bourgeois is one of the better producers. If you ever run into their Sancerre, uh, sorry, I think I said Sancerre Rouge, Sancerre Blanc. I think they're one of the better producers. If you ever run into their Sancerre Rouge, buy it, try it, you won't be disappointed. Um, James says now, yes, by the way. Perfect, James. I'm glad to hear that. Um, the next wine is one of my favorite wines uh, that I actually sold uh, when I was not for a load with classic wines. I was selling this wine to restaurants, um, and it's, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Taylor's Kitchen carried it for a little while, uh, but it is Buttonwood Cabernet Franc. Um, which you guys will see the image here in just a minute, and I'll talk a little bit about the image on the bottle. But first and foremost, what you need to know is that uh, on the label, you'll see it's labeled Santa Ynez Valley. A lot of people don't know where that is. It's, it's inside of Santa Barbara County, okay? And what makes Santa Ynez unique and why it's its own AVA is because on either side of that particular area uh, is the San Rafael Range, which has like this really warm air coming over the top. And then the Pacific Coast on the other side, which has, of course, you know, nice cool air coming up over the top. So it kind of meets in the middle. So what ends up happening is you have that, it's referred to as this diurnal shift, right? Uh, where you have these nice warm days but then cool evenings. And that's beautiful for grapes. And as you guys are drinking this Cabernet Franc, you'll see why it's so special. So Buttonwood Farms as a winery uh, was not really founded until like the 880s. The Buttonwood Farm itself was originally founded as an, as an equestrian estate. It's kind of like a, kind of like a hipster place <laughs> where like, where like everything was supposed to be like in harmony, right? Um, so they wanted animals and, and things that were all kind of like welcome to eat the fruit and, and the farming. Uh, they farm peaches, they farm pears, uh, uh, almonds, um, they make olive oil and of course um, they make wine. And 
all of those things surrounded kind of makes it, I don't want to say it, it's not biodynamic, right? They certainly practice sustainable farming, um, which has always kind of been a part of their model, right? Because they wanted it to be a place that kind of like takes care of itself. Um, so that's certainly a part of the model, but not, not biodynamic, sustainable, um, and beautiful. If you guys are ever in Santa Barbara in that area, go visit. I've been there. It's amazing. Um, I think I mentioned Betty Williams. She was kind of like at the head of, of the founding of all of this. Um, the art on the label, which is really cool. They kind of change it from vintage to vintage. And the reason why they're able to do that and the reason why they look so consistent if you follow the vintages back uh, is because it's all done by an artist named Severn Zorthian. And Severn Zorthian has been a part of Buttonwood Winery pretty much since the beginning. Um, she has an, a studio that she lives on at the farm, uh, or sorry, a studio that she works at on the farm. Um, and so she, the very first vintage, which I think was like 1989, uh, she took a couple of vines off of the, off of the, the, she took a couple of branches off of the vines, right? And she went back inside of her studio and I think she used those to actually paint the very first label. So every label for every vintage is slightly different and they're, I think they're stunning. Um, yeah, I think they're just really, really beautiful and very well done. So they call it the artist series if you're on their website at all, um, which all these wines are from that particular category. They call it the art, artist series. Uh, the winemaker is amazing. Her name is uh, Karen Steinwalk. Uh, and I got to meet her when I was there. She's incredibly nice. Uh, she's very, very well renowned in the wine community. She has worked at places like uh, Foley Estates. She's worked at Fiddlehead Cellars. Um, she knows her stuff and, and uh, you can definitely get a sense of like her respect for what's happening in the vineyard, right? Uh, which every great winemaker understands that and respects that. So, so yeah, if you apport it, start drinking it, uh, smell it. Uh, I'll tell you what I smell. Uh, and, you know, I've tr I tried this earlier today, so I'm, I'm a little biased because I already know, but hopefully it's opened up just, to, uh, just a little bit. I'm still getting a ton of like violet, like toasty, smoky vanilla. Um, there's definitely a hint of tobacco there. And like a little bit of a leather component, maybe some herbal notes, right? Um, this is a beautiful smelling wine. It's a beautiful looking wine for that matter. If you, um, man, I should have uh, I should have looked up uh, an image of, uh, I think I have one in my, in my photo album on my laptop somewhere. I should have, should have brought it up um, to share with you guys. But if you look up an image of Cabernet Franc, it has this very beautiful like mixed color. Like it's, it's light and it's dark and the grapes like vary in range. Um, so it's very distinct compared to like, uh, it's very distinct compared to like, uh, like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Uh, Cabernet Franc is going to have like this beautiful range of colors on the grape uh, cluster itself. Um, this particular wine uh, spends 30 months in French oak, 25% of that is new. So it makes sense that you're going to get like that vanilla, that toasty, smoky kind of thing going on. Uh, totally makes sense. So when you move on to the palette though, let's see what we get. Ooh, man, I love this wine. Before you even get to anything, any of the tasting notes, the thing that you have to remember too is like at the end of the day, right? When you're talking about wine, is do you like it, right? I love this wine. I love Cabernet Franc. Um, I'm All right, I got a picture like, up on the screen now of it. Cool. Uh, I Jordan just told me that we got a picture up on the screen. Uh, of Cabernet Franc grapes. Uh, I am not, hang on one second. Let me, uh, let me see if I can pull it up just so I can comment on it because I want to see what you guys are seeing. Uh, boom, there you go, Cab Franc. So it's kind of hard to tell in that photo, but that is the Cab, Cab Franc uh, cluster. And, um, but if you see it in person, you get a, a, a higher appreciation, I think of like the range of colors that, that really come in the Cab Franc grape. Um, but they're beautiful, right? And, uh, and hence you get a ton of flavors and they're really concentrated. So 
Things I'm picking up on, plum right away. Dried cherries. I mentioned herbal note. I'm picking up like a more specific, like bay leaf kind of aroma. Um, Indians put bay leaf in everything. So that one always jumps out for me. Uh, like every curry ever has like bay leaf in it for some reason. Uh, and then and then on the finish, like the, the leather and the tobacco flavors are all there. Um, now this isn't an, an incredibly aged wine, right? Like it's not, uh, it hasn't been aged for, you know, 10, 15 years to be able to develop those flavors. Uh, those flavors I think are really unique to Cab Franc. And, um, and whether you're drinking Cab Franc from, from here in the US um, or if you're drinking Cab Franc from like Chinon, right? Which is in the Loire Valley, kind of like the last wine was, um, you get a, a sense of appreciation for uh, the range of the wine. Like it just has so much potential uh, as a young wine, let alone if you were able to lay it down and drink it 10, 15 years later. So Cab Franc, don't sleep on it. Go look for it, go find it. Um, things that I would pair with this, um, man, like I'm just thinking like, like, like tertiary, like, like earthy type stuff, like pork and mushrooms. Um, here's one, uh, chicken mole. If you wanna make yourself some really good Mexican food, I think this would be amazing with chicken mole. Um, truffle mac and cheese. Right, anything that has kind of like some earthiness to it, I think will lend itself uh, really, really well to this wine. So uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys like the wines, uh, what did you like about them? And then if you have any questions about this wine, feel free to chime in. I'm gonna drink this glass while you guys uh, shoot some notes at me. Do you have a question from Neelam uh, asking, serve at room temperature or chilled? Mm. Slightly under room temperature. If you're going to if you're going to store it under room temperature, right? Uh, just pull it out like an hour before you're going to actually drink it, and just let it come up like slightly. Um, so just under room temperature, right? Like like I keep my my living room at like seventy four degrees. Um, I keep my house at seventy four degrees. Sorry, and so I kind of want to drink my wines like at seventy. So I keep my wines in my wine fridge in the garage. I keep it between 55 and 58 degrees, right? So when I pull out the reds, I usually pull them out just a little bit before I'm actually gonna drink them because I want them to come up just a hair. We often drink our, our uh, red wines um, too warm and we drink our white wines too cold, right? So kind of the same thing with white wines, right? Um, don't, you don't want the red wines to get too hot and you don't want the white wines to get too cold. You don't want them to be freezing, right? Don't throw it in the freezer. Put it in the fridge, let it chill in there for like an hour or an hour and a half, uh, and then pull it out and you should be good to go. Um, so yeah, good question, by the way. Great question about temperatures. I heard recently somebody asked me about like vintages, like do vintages matter? Vintages do matter. Um, Vintages matter a lot more when you're talking about aging potential, right? And I don't wanna say like, vintages matter when you talk about aging potential as well. And there's no, there, there's no like guide unless you get to 20 years from now and start tasting some of those wines and then figure out what's holding up well and what's not, is this vintage holding up well? You don't know that until later down the road. Now you have some clues when the wine is young, right? Is it quaffable, right? Is it quaffable, is it drinkable? Is the wine like, is it so tannic that it like blows up your palate and you get cotton mouth? Um, that, that's not going to be fun or enjoyable. Is the acidity like really ripping high? That's another sign that you could probably age that for a little while so that way the acidity can like help mellow down, mellow out over time. Um, those things kind of play a role, right? Um, so it, it's tough with vintage. Like you don't want to, don't write vintages off. Like some people are like, oh, that wasn't a great vintage. And it's like, yeah, you can say that about certain vintages in the eighties because we've now gotten this far, right? But you can't say that like 15, 16, 17, that you can't say they were like great or off vintages quite yet. 
you can say that for the most part, they're drinking really well. Um, but to call it a bad vintage, it, it, these, these wines are too young. They're, they're too young to tell um, if they were bad vintages. So, and then sometimes too, like, like uh, the Eugene Meyer uh, Pinot Gris that we drank you know, like two or three tastings ago, um, that's a really good example of a wine that like when it switched vintages um, from like the, it went from 14 to 16 for me as a buyer. And when I went from the 14 to the 16, the 16 was kind of like, mm, not as good. Uh, but then like six months later, I drank the 16. Uh, and this is years ago. Uh, I drank the 16 like six months after and it was bomb again. So it just needed time in the bottle to like do what it needed to do to get to the point where it was gonna like really shine. And that's a real thing. Like wine is very much a living thing, right? It grows, it gets more beautiful. It goes through phases. It might have some teenage years. Right, that's a real thing too. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like these wines. They're they're a couple of my favorites. Um, if I was running a program, these are the types of wines that I'd probably put on my on my wine list. Speaking of which, uh, I <laughs> I've been like dying to like share this with you guys. So for those of you guys who are watching, thank you for being here. I appreciate the love and the support. I have applied for my own alcohol license and uh, have been feverishly working on uh, a, a website for you guys to be able to come and purchase the wines from me directly. So moving forward, uh, that'll be a thing. Hopefully, knock on wood. I shouldn't say moving forward because we might have, there may be a hiccup or two, but um, I've got all the stuff in the works, the business licenses, all the permits, the, yeah, everything is in the works. So hopefully soon, um, I'll, and I'll make a big announcement about it. I'll probably go live um, so that you guys can, can hear about it. Um, but that's a thing. And I wanted to thank you guys for, for those of you guys who have been like trucking along with this whole thing uh, and running around to like grab the wines in order to participate. Uh, pretty soon you won't have to run around as much. Um, you know, I can do local pickup and delivery if you're out of the area, I'll be able to ship it to you. Of course, that comes with a small cost. Uh, but uh, those are all things that are real. And those are all things that you guys will be able to participate uh, with me in the future a little bit more. And hopefully it helps build this thing up. Uh, on that same note, would love it if you guys could share the page, if you guys could just tell your friends about it. Um, because as, as time is moving forward, um, you know, I. I still am not back to work uh, to my to to you know selling wine to restaurants, and I I feel for all my restaurant people, and I feel for all of my fellow salespeople uh, who are selling wines to all these restaurants. Like, there's nothing to go back to. A lot of places are closing. A lot of places are still limited. Like, it is tough, and so um, this is just another avenue for me to try and put some bread on the table. Um, and you know, for those of you guys who have listened to me talk about everything from the beginning of Wine Talk with Tesh to moving into an online site uh, where you guys can purchase directly, uh, thank you a million times for being a sounding board and for being a friend and for the support. So uh, let me know what you guys think of the Cab Franc and the Sancerre if you guys are drinking. If not, let me know what you are drinking because hopefully you tuned in and you have a drink in your hand. If you did not have a drink in your hand, we can't be friends. <laughs> I do have a, a couple questions here. So the first one comes from uh, Nick. He asks, how do you like cooler climate Cab Franc, like Finger Lakes compared to warmer regions like Napa? I like the warmer region better for some reason. Um, like, oh, here's a good example. Um, Who's, the, who's that producer? Nick, chime in. We, we both have had it. It's a Cab Franc from a cooler climate. Um, you carried it at Ella, and I, I took some off your hands to carry it out the kitchen. It's going to drive me insane. Um, I find that the warmer climate tends to have a little bit more characteristics to it, right? I, I think that Cab Franc fares a little bit better, more in tune to the actual varietal. 
Terrison? Um, Terrison. Yeah, Terrison. Um, that was that's a good example, right? Like, I think that I think that was a cooler climate uh, uh, wine. Um, but that that's a good example. Like night and day between this wine and between Terrison, I would totally pick this all day. I just think it has so much more complexity. Um, and and again, like a fairer tribute to to the varietal, right? Like I think that Cabernet Sauvignon, when you think there's a reason why Napa is referred to as like the king of the king of Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, it's more true to that varietal. You can grow all kinds of stuff in Napa, and they do, right? They grow a wide variety of things, um, but Cabernet Sauvignon is the king, and it's true to that varietal. I think that. Uh, I think that in this particular case, right, even with like Buttonwood being uh, in Santa Ynez Valley, where like warm days, cool nights, very much Napa, um, it's it's more true to the varietal. Nick, I'm curious what you think of the differences between the two. Let us know in the comments because you are a certified sommelier as well, uh, and I appreciate uh, you and your ideas. By the way, uh, since Nick is is on here and paying attention and showing me love. We gotta give a shout out to Nick. Nick is doing some stuff uh, with Roco Wine and Spirits. Um, follow Roco Wine. It's at Roco Wine on Instagram, uh, Roco Wine and Spirits on Facebook. Um, Nick is, is doing some wine selections for Roco uh, and uh, he's killing it, man. He puts together great lists. Uh, he put together the list at Ella for quite a while there. Um, until COVID hit, um, and he's incredible, man. He he has great tasting notes. He knows what he's doing, and uh, and I got another. I've known him for a long time. We met in like Napa randomly, uh, quite a many years ago, and then we ended up working together. So uh, he's a good dude. Nick Mallon, follow him. Uh, so while we on. wait for him to uh, answer, I do have a comment uh, from James. James says he's drinking the Sancerre. It's a great summer wine. And um, a question from James as well. Uh, just wondering what pairs well with the Cap Franc. Ah, what pairs well with the Cap Franc? I think I mentioned a couple of these things. Um, I think I said like chicken mole was the one that would like really jump out to me in terms of pairing with the Cap Franc. Um, I think I mentioned truffle mac and cheese. Anything earthy, like anything with mushrooms, like steak and mushrooms. Um, I think uh, the, the wine has a lot of uh, like earthy, rustic, tertiary notes. Um, I think that anything that has like some earth or some green, sorry, not green, some earthy notes to it, like truffle, mushrooms, um, mole even, I think all of those things would pair incredibly well uh, with this wine. So hang on, I'm trying to think. Uh, James, if I was uh, you in your shoes, um, you you could wash a Cajun ribeye down with this from Morton's and it'll probably kill. Uh, but but if you want to elevate it a notch, uh, get a side of button mushrooms. Get a side of mushrooms to go with it. Oh, uh, Nick, follow Nick. His uh, his uh, Instagram handle is Somtography. S O M M T O G R A P H Y. Somtography. Uh, that's the one that he's doing uh, the stuff. They call them Nick Pick Fridays, which uh, don't say that 10 times fast. Um, Nick Pick Fridays. And so he, he's partnering with Roco Wine and Spirits and he's doing a great job uh, and, and he does incredible. So, so yeah. Nick, if you're still there, I still want to know what you think about the differences between cool climate cab fronts and warm climate cab fronts. All right, if we don't hear from him, it's all good. Nick, hit us in the, in the comment section later. Guys, thank you. Thank you to Fluid Concepts. Thank you to Platinum Wine Lounge. Thank you to my wife for holding up with the kids for, for 30 minutes so I can do something that like feeds my soul and feeds my, um, my mind and my heart and all of those things. I hope you guys are doing all right. Hang in there. I know it's tough, especially for a lot of us industry folks um there's been a lot of dark days i'll just leave it at that uh but nonetheless i appreciate you guys and thanks for participating in this 
uh, because it's been giving me something to do. And hopefully soon you guys will see uh, another live video uh, and I'll let you know as soon as the website is up and we can uh, hopefully start putting together some dope selections for you guys to drink some amazing wines at home. All right. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Peace out.